and here we have the clear ink display right here the ID Tech X where you just won a, another award so hello so who are you my name is Joel Pollock I'm the independent director I'm the board of directors for clear ink and uh, who are you? Uh, my name is Robert Fleming. I'm the CTO of Clearing Displays. And uh, so at the SID Display Week uh, a few months ago, you won the best in show, and that's the display conference for the whole world. It's the premier conference for displays internationally. Uh, and the, the best experts in the world looked at all of the entries and chose our display for uh, display of the year. So it, uh, it was quite an honor and uh, we're still working really hard to make it a realization to commercialize this but we now have demonstrated something that, so uh, uh, and this is this is uh, as you were saying before in your uh, when you got the award you're saying that uh, this has been a dream for are you saying for 50 forever? years 50 years my, my very first job in displays you can see from my white hair my very first job in displays my manager when i asked him what a perfect display was he grabbed a sheet of paper he said make it like this and while we have realized many dreams in the industry, such as the TV that hangs on the wall, we have yet to make something that's truly like paper. But I believe now we're finally on the verge of making something that's not only like paper, but can do video and do a color as well. And this is still one of the early prototypes, right? Oh yeah, there's some childhood disease here. There's a there's a fewer colors than there will be, right? Yes, that's true. We'll, we will have higher resolution. There will be more color. Uh, there's quite a few things that we're bringing to the next version that will come from our manufacturing partner. And that will happen by the top of next year. So that's when it gets mass produced and all the processes get optimized and stuff like that, right? We have a lot still to optimize. The uh, R&D team, the engineering team are, are working very diligently to figure out all the rest of the, the, rest of the details to bring it to a product. Uh, this is a very... Uh, <coughs> Uh, challenging time for us, but I'm extremely optimistic. The team is very talented and very capable, uh, and they've done so much to bring this technology along to where it is today. So you were mentioning that you were working in the display industry for a long time, right? And, yes. And uh, the goal was to reach paper. So what, 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 when, what did you then go out and do at that point? What were you doing back then? Well, so we've done many things in the industry. Certainly, there was a near-term goal to make things like a, a large area active matrix display for a TV to hang on the wall. Uh, people didn't believe that was possible. People didn't believe we would make flat panel displays that would replace CRTs. Now we can barely remember what a CRT was. Were you involved in those two? Oh yes, I've been yeah. at it a long time. I, I started in it about the time that when it was still dirt. Okay, you know, I've dirt. been. I, yeah, I, I, I go way back about a hundred years on this. No, I I've been in the display industry now nearly 50 years. LCD. I worked on LCDs when they didn't yet work at room temperature. And we've been trying. So they were working in what? In, in uh, extra heat or extra cold? Oh, that you had to warm them up to work warm when them I started. Up. But now we take it for granted displays. However, we don't take for granted reflective displays, paper-like displays. This is the technology we need to do to make e-school books, to make wearables, to make digital still cameras. Are you able to, to switch automotive. it over to the, to, the, to the text mode or it's, it's just a loop, right? Yeah, this is just a loop. On this, this is a loop on yeah. this display. But so it we can will, show text right, so and video. Right, so this is an electrophoretic display. There are electrophoretic displays and, and a lot of e-paper displays that are, that are used for e-readers, but none of them can do video. And, and none of them can do video color. This is really quite an improvement over what's been done. So do you promise, are you confident that this is going to be the dream of the, the paper color animated uh, video paper? This, this is, this is, when, I, when I, I look at what the newspaper that Harry Potter had was, it was closest to this. And you had that in the, in the Harry Potter movie? Oh yeah, I'm saying yeah. the Harry Potter movie. They had a dream that someday you would have a, a newspaper that showed color video. Well, if you wish to realize it, we are closer to having that technology than anything else that's been done to date. So, when you, yeah, when you put a display with a polarizer on it, it never looks like paper. So Having there's no polarizer no here. Polarizer no polarizer here. This is why it looks yeah. so much like paper. There's no backlight, no polarizers. No backlight, no, no polarizers. Yeah. Uh, but there's uh, some some tricks, some yeah. secrets. What we've something. what we've really done is we're, we're we've managed the light in this room with our microstructured optics technology. We take the light in the room, we manage that light and bring it to the eyes of the viewer. So what manage we call the light. so yeah. we, we we it's called optical gain. So we maximize the light in this room and redirect it to the viewer 
And so that's how you can see brighter and now you can add a color filter and you can get brighter displays. Is there some kind of filter on top? This has a color filter, standard color filter. That in takes the, the light and re yeah. refracts well, it? Well, that's where our out? optical structure is and our optical lens technology. So our, our core is really the, 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 the know-how on the optical materials and st structures and micro-replication technology married that with the, the device architecture and the device physics to get an electrophoretic display that can do video and can do full color. It can be flexible. Yes, Next. it can. Yes, it can. <laughs> Next. Next. We're, we're, Next. That's another challenge, Next. right? We do it one step at a time, but actually there's this, le this technology lends itself so much more to making a flexible display than anything else that's been made. Really? Yes. So I it's mean, more, uh, it's easier than OLED and LCD uh, to do OLED, flexible. OLED would, but the problem with OLED is you're not going to see OLED in full sunlight. This one, you can see this no matter how bright the sunlight is. We will actually make a front light for this so you can use it in total darkness. But almost every display that's out there washes out in the bright sunlight. This one actually looks better, as you can see here. So it's it actually, it looks better when you go to the healthier place, which is outside. Exactly and not right. stay inside with indoor lighting, right? Exactly right. now right. we have with uh, some strange spotlights and stuff, and this it's is, actually better to go outside. This is why the Chinese government is pushing so hard to specify a reflective display for e-textbooks, because they want Chinese youth to go outside more. They're spending too much time inside, reading and studying. And as a result, 90% of Chinese youth are nearsighted. So. Is that why you're working with Chinese uh, yes. factory? It, Shenzhen right. is a factory well, for the whole world, right? Well, it's no a factory for the do, whole you world. You would go to Shenzhen, right? Of course. So, but but no, that's different than different selling to the there. China market. The China market is the first that will make e-school books. Japan and others will follow afterwards. So they're very interested. Extraordinary. You have meetings? Yes. Because. Uh, it's a 1.3 billion or people or it's, something? It, it, it is a lot of people. There's a lot of students. They see the need for it. And they're going to make the conversion from paper textbooks starting in 2018. So it's a great first target for us, as is wearables. The Kindle is great. It's awesome. Oh, it's wonderful. It's beautiful, yeah. right? It's, it's super fantastic. cool. But it's but, black and white. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it'd be great to have uh, the Harry Potter, right? You, you can't do video. Can't you can't do video. You can't, do, can't do color. You can't like do all this touch activity. You so can smoothly. do touch. You can yeah, do but touch. you have to wait for things right. to refresh. But it, and it flashes. You know, yeah. it works very well, and it's extraordinarily good for what it does. Uh, but what we're trying to do is serve different markets, markets that really need video. Is there any chance it can be, let's say, cheaper than e-ink? Well, I can't imagine that it would be. Uh, I, you know, I can't really speak to price at this point because we're not yet into production. There's nothing intrinsically more expensive about what we're doing. Because sometimes uh, I love those e-ink displays. The large ones are beautiful, but the display alone is like $500. And so they sell the devices at seven or $800. It'd be so cool to have a, a A4 page that is affordable and that is like Harry Potter. Please understand. Before, you can do it. Well, before I yeah. joined the board of directors <laughs> yeah. at ClearInc, I was managing display development for Amazon. So I'm, I'm oh, really? fully familiar with, with the Kindle and what it can do. It's an extraordinary display, it's a well-designed front light, and it's exactly what's needed for books. We're going for a different market. Textbooks are quite different. We're going to need to have color, and we're going to need to have moving illustrations. And we're going to need to have scrolling capability that won't exist with today's uh, electrophoretic displays. So what's the frame rate? Or the, is it, a, a, is it variable, kind of? Right, right Depends. now we're, we're are running at 34 frames per second. Why uh, is it 34? It's just the, the kind of the status of the, the, the electronics and driving at the moment uh, and the device architecture. So as the device architecture and electronics improve, we can go faster. Uh, so it's, it's, it's early stage technology. We're bringing all the supply chain. We're coming out of the lab into manufacturing now. So everything will improve. And, and it's get fine if video is 30 and you, you display at 34, that right. doesn't do an issue. It's fine. We can manage yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, And uh, the power consumption? This is a very low power display. Now it's not a bi-stable display. Bi-stable displays will probably be the lowest possible power consumption. But compared to any other technology that you can use, this one will be extraordinarily low power. Extraordinarily low power, so uh, 
well uh, below what an LCD would do, well below what an OLED would do, because OLEDs are 40% less efficient for white and for an e-textbook. You can imagine, there's an awful lot of white. And you can imagine going outside, where now if you have an, o, an a, a emissive device, a, a transmissive LCD or an OLED, you'd have to turn the power to, to full brightness, and that really drains the battery. Where, where in the clear ink display, the power doesn't change. And uh, how does it compare with memory LCD? So memory LCD is a different issue. This is a question of whether there's memory in panel, whether you have to refresh it or whether it, it can retain the image. That's, a, that's not really where most of the power consumption is. Yes, for high resolution, it definitely saves power to put memory in panel, but the bulk of the power is consumed with the backlight in, a, in, in an LCD. Uh, frankly, only about 10% of the light, at best, makes it from the backlight all the way to your eye in an LCD. Highly inefficient. And uh, so when uh, you, you're talking about getting to the paper, yeah. most paper is like very white. Yes. Can you get white, very white? We're How white can you get? Excellent. Well, we don't, we don't have the hard data at the moment, but we have very good whiteness. And you can see in these, because you're using a color filter, um, and, and you can mix the whites, we get good brightness, and you can see uh, very good, very good whites in this demo. And uh, we're actually continuing to make improvements. Our first goal is to make displays that are as good as a color copy. Our next goal will be to make displays that are as good as a textbook, a printed high quality textbook. And those will come one after the other. We'll increase resolution, we'll increase some of the other aspects of performance as we go along. And uh, maybe not flexible, but can it be some, some kind of unbreakable ED? So you can have a very thin device, but it's okay if it drops on the floor? Yes, absolutely. Ruggedized, yeah. flexible are all on our technology development road, roadmap, lightweight. Uh, but we're, we're, we're going into conventional fabs at the moment. So uh, the strategy is to keep it very basic in terms of the fabrication technology. And that will keep the cost down as well. And uh, at the SID Display Week, it sounded like it was uh, coming very soon. Yeah. And it's still coming very soon? We're oh, scaling yes. up at the moment. You're at scaling the up. We're, yes, we're our starting first to scale up production process. prototypes will happen at the beginning of 2018. Beginning? Yes. It's like two, three months from yes. now. Production. Yes. Like yeah, we will be getting prototype off the, off the manufacturing line by the beginning of 2018. So this is an exciting time, right? Very oh. exciting time. Couldn't be exciting more time. exciting. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. there's seven or eight billion people in the world and you can try to imagine oh, if yeah. this works out, what right. it's going to yeah. do to, this, uh, to all these people. Yeah. It's going to be... 2018 is a very exciting year for Clear Inc. So uh, what, keep, it, keep your eyes open for Clear Inc. in 2018. It's an exciting time.